Hi, I'm Chandler Mack. I'm a sports anchor at News 19 in my hometown of Columbia, South Carolina. Some of the stories you will see in this video include my coverage of Don Staley and the Gamecocks National Championship run all the way to Minneapolis, Minnesota. My coverage of Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks road to the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, as well as a look at what life is like for a sports anchor during basketball and baseball season. Coming into tonight's showdown, Gino Ariema was a perfect 11-0 in national championship games. We can now change that to 11-1. If we're talking about the Gamecock defense, everything starts with defensive back Cam Smith. The Westwood grad led the team with 14 pass deflections last season. Win the team, I'm going to say win because an NFL team will draft a Kobe Durant. I'm going to speak that into existence. When a team drafts you, what type of player will that team be getting? If Spencer throws for over 300 yards against the Fighting Irish tomorrow, get this, he would become just the fourth quarterback in Gamecock history to eclipse the 300-yard passing mark on four different occasions in a single season. Consistency proved to be DJ's downfall in Death Valley. Let's break it down. Through the first seven games this season, DJ had 17 touchdown passes and only two interceptions. But over the final five games, DJ, you struggled. You grew up a diehard Gamecock fan. So going back to maybe five-year-old, even 13-year-old Olivia, did you ever think and did you ever imagine that one day you would be a national champion with the Gamecocks? The 63 points the Gamecocks scored against Tennessee were the most points scored by an unranked team against a top five opponent since polls were established back in 1936. Walk me through the moment when you got that call from the Blue Jays last night. What was the first thing that came to your mind? Since the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons suffered losses Sunday, the Panthers, as you can see, are now just a game and a half back of first place in the NFC South. The championship trophy. That's why you play the game, folks. And by winning that trophy, the Bendig Tiger women's basketball team punched its ticket to the NCAA Division II tournament. The legendary poet Dwayne Michael Carter Jr. once said that real G's move in silence like lasagna. Well, the G must have stood for Gamecocks because Carolina did its thing against the Cats. Gamecocks jumped out to a 13-2 lead through the first five minutes of action. And it's going to be key for the Gamecocks to get the ball in Jaheim's hands. Here's why. Since the start of last season, the Gamecocks are 7-3 when Bell has four or more touches. That record drops to 5-6 and six when he has less than four touches. Saturday's win clinched Clemson's seventh ACC title in the last eight seasons, and it also sealed the team's eighth 11-win season under Dabo Sweeney. As a team, Carolina had 74 rebounds, which – is not only a program record in an SEC game, but the plus 57 rebound margin is the highest by a Division I team against any opponent in the past 20 seasons. Now, as all of you just saw, I was at CLA most of the day covering the Gamecock women's basketball game. But while I was there, I was also following the Gamecock baseball game, which was happening at the same time at Founders Park. I was checking the score and I saw this tweet. Gamecocks down 7-1 against USC Greensboro heading into the ninth inning. So I thought to myself, hey, there's no chance the Gamecocks are coming back. So I'll just stay here at the arena and edit the show. While I was doing that, this is what happened. First, Connor Sino hit his first career home run, bringing the Gamecocks within Four, and then with the bases loaded and two outs, Andrew Eister tied the game up at seven apiece with a grand slam into left field. So with that taking place, my whole plan changed. So I packed up my stuff at the arena and made that trip down Blossom Street to see if I could maybe catch a Gamecocks walk-off win. My hustle and bustle paid off. I pulled up in the bottom of the 10th inning Gamecocks at the plate with a runner on third and freshman Michael Braswell at the plate. And this is what happened. Braswell did exactly what he needed to do. He brought Colin Burgess home from third, completing the Gamecock comeback 8-7. to seven. And in doing so, my guy taught me a very valuable lesson. And that lesson is to never doubt or bet against the Gamecocks.